Recently, I played through <laughs> Gears of War Semicolon Ultimate Edition for Windows 10 with the help of some friends that I drove insane. The following is a completely accurate summary of the campaign. Trust me. The game begins with John DiMaggio self-isolating when his best friend Jack comes to rescue him so he can help a corpse hunt down toilet paper in the apocalypse because all of the Goombas have hoarded it for themselves. I immediately need to adjust my mouse sensitivity and I leave Max trapped in his cell so he can start violating the six-foot recommendation. Then I find out that Gears of War Semicolon Ultimate Edition for Windows 10 doesn't have toggle aim, so I'm giving it a 0 out of 10. We fight our way through the beginning of Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace and after waiting around for an uncomfortable amount of time, a small piece of wall slides down to allow us to progress through the rest of the level. Corpse and Bender almost get killed by a giant enemy crab because they didn't try to attack its weak point for massive damage. We meet up with Kazahira Miller. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Welcome to Delta Squad. And Spider lets us know some unfortunate news. Uh, Gears of War Ultimate Edition is broken for everything on 1A03 or later. Nice. You're only gonna get 35 to 40 frames per second. <laughs> Cool. Arlie Ermy starts shouting nonsense at Kaz, and we're left to move about the country in order to hunt down the Colonel's Bluetooth speaker. I can't read, so I completely miss the run button, and we continue the game for another 15 minutes before Max figures it out, but to be fair, who in their right mind would have figured out that the run button was bound to holding spacebar? We exterminate our way through hordes of Goombas, and I learn that I'm too stupid to understand the advanced mechanics of having to press the reload button a second time at the perfect time in order to reload faster. Carmine finds a speaker, but it's not the one we're looking for, so he just tosses it down a hole because apparently a free Bluetooth speaker isn't exciting enough to keep around. We chainsaw our way through more hordes of Goombas before splitting up, and I have no problems with this section whatsoever. Max, on the other hand... I don't remember these. Don't. I haven't played this Marcus game in... Is out. Oh, I just died. <laughs> After meeting back up, Corpse kicks open a door, and the Scotsman pretends he's helping. Now we figure out how to sprint, and we finally really get to see the effects of having no access to toilet paper. Severe constipation. Rest in peace Anthony Carmine, who died because he also couldn't figure out the advanced reloading mechanic. We hold it in through another horde of Goombas before meeting up with everyone's favorite character. Private Augustus Cole, Alpha Squad, sir! Cole? As in the Cole train? Yeah, that's right. Our best friend Jack helps us through a door while we defend him from hordes of really small dudes that the game clearly doesn't want us to melee but lets us do it anyways. We pick up the Hammer of Dawn and roast some medium-sized enemy crabs with the power of dubstep. Kaz has a few issues operating a valve, but we'll know soon that it's not just him. We find out that, uh, Dr. Draken is immune to the Hammer of Dawn. After cooking two more crabs, we find out that even though... I'm just gonna stick to Bender, because oh my god, John DiMaggio has so many different characters. Even though Bender can survive a shot from the Hammer of Dawn if a corpse is firing it, he can't survive it if he's doing it himself, and neither can the corpse. But we can survive it if the other person is firing it. The walls are hungry. Oh, the wall just hate that guy. We bum rush our way to save Alpha Squad, who are having a picnic on a rooftop because the Goombas are being rude. It turns out that Alpha Squad has the Colonel's Bluetooth speaker, so we pick it up and call an Uber. But the Goombas aren't fond of ride sharing, so they send a blooper into it and Nemesis kills Kaz so he'll stop bitching about his arm and his leg. After taking cover in a building, the Goombas unleash Rule 63 Solomon Grundy on us. In order to kill it, we have to lure it outside and use the power of dubstep on its eardrums, so we do that with absolutely no problems whatsoever. <laughs> oh, Jesus! Jesus. <laughs> well, I'm dead. Oh, <laughs> you're dead too. Oh, shit! I thought it was coming after you! <laughs> uh oh, <fire>. ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm dead, dead. Yeah, real afraid. No! Oh! Oh, oh killed me. Break her super heat. Fuck. Dom, Marcus is out. Oh, no. Oh. Yes, okay, cool. Well, then, okay. <laughs> Dom, let's do it. You need to move. <laughs> I was ready. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, it's dead. Yeah. We let the colonel know that we've got his Bluetooth speaker and he tells us to drop it off at the post office, so we set off. Remy gets stomped on by a Goomba, so we kill them and then everyone between us and the post office. We arrive at the post office and Not Bender tells Corpse that we can't borrow his car because even on Sarah, superhuman cog soldiers can't be trusted behind the wheel. 
but he's eventually persuaded when we trade Coltrane and Kaz as sex slaves for the night. We touch our faces in the dark and take a romantic river cruise together when I discover that it wasn't just the AI being buggy about turning knobs, everyone in this game gets really freaky about it. After concluding that it must have been drugs... Ah! What the fuck?! This is fun. And I'm glitching out again! Ah! What the fuck?! Oh, yeah. Max, do you see this? Yeah. <laughs> I've been taking too much cocaine! Or not enough! I don't know, the mixture's <laughs> off! No, get your head off your ear, I wanna run! We touch our face again and get attacked by an angry roving band of keys who must have been tired of fucking with elves, so they came to fuck with walking refrigerators instead. We get through this section with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Really cold one. Well, fuck, Dom, I did it. Marcus is out! <laughs> Dom, oh, I died. Marcus is out! Dark, dark, oh, dark! Shit. Ah, I'm not the dark anymore. Fuck you! <laughs> Did you know? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> then we get lost for too long because the game decided to introduce a mechanic that's only ever used in this exact instance without telling us. All right. We'll dash to that light. Let's go. I got ah. caught in the sewer. <laughs> nope, that's not the way. <laughs> <laughs> just, just watching you explode. Oh my god! <laughs> can we push this? Wait. No, I tried to. Yes, we can. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you kidding? Okay, we figured it out, Spider. It was dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Then we get lost a second time because the game decided to introduce another mechanic that's only ever used in this exact instance without telling us. Oh, here we go. This thing that doesn't look like it's interactable with the environment. <laughs> of course! After killing some more Goombas, we come across an asshole drunk who we're not really sure is actually going to help us or get us killed, but we choose to trust him anyways because it's past midnight and we need to get to 7-Eleven because it's the only thing still open this late and we're hungry. We make our way down a hill with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Oh fuck! Dumb. Marcus is out! <laughs> what just happened? No Push! Push! Oh, oh, we oh, gotta shit. follow this. Dumb. Marcus is out! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we have to follow this car. Shit. Ah! This is a mistake! I think that's just a bait. <laughs> it is. It definitely is. She <laughs> baited it. By Cliff Wilsonski. Come on, come on, come on! We gotta hurry! You fucked me! <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were coming! Oh my god, no! <laughs> Dom, Marcus is out! <laughs> After filling up Not Bender's car with guzzoline and touching our face again, we set off in an incredibly boring vehicle section with an NPC that won't shut the fuck up that lasts way too long. We meet back up with Coltrane and Kaz who started a Goomba Stomp without us and we all get in Not Bender's truck. Kaz wants to listen to some music, but Bender says no fun allowed and we drive the rest of the way in silence. The car breaks down and we're forced to walk the rest of the way, so we touch our face and Radio Lady tells us to take a hike in a cave because it's got great acoustics for the Bluetooth speaker. So we set off. I learned to teleport through a chain link fence because... Game. After making our way inside a mining facility, we touch our face and daydream about hungry hungry hippos before meeting up with a guy who's been practicing self-isolation like a good citizen, but has gone a little stir-crazy and wants to come with us to go outside. We make our way through a puzzle with no problems whatsoever. That's oh, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> you, that was like comical. Oh, now I'm down. Okay, well. Shit, he's gone. Ah, an elevator. <laughs> By elevator, I mean the ladder. <laughs> My brain. Ah, uh, yes. The <laughs> elevator ladder. So is it gonna keep dropping us in there until we get the correct path? Stop screaming. I was playing with 12 year olds on Xbox Live. Nah, because then we would have heard a couple of N words by now. No, fucking. This is stupid. Oh, fuck. I was right at the end, too. Yeah, me too. Gears of War. We'll give your brain a workout. Yeah, I didn't want puzzles in my meathead game, thanks. 
Stop! We're thrown into a Disneyland ride and it's as dumb as it sounds. What the fuck is going Whoa. on? <laughs> After making our way into the cave, we hatch a plan to annoy the Goombas to death by blasting dubstep into their homes. This game is actually Looney Tunes. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that was ridiculous. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> We're attacked by a giant enemy crab, so we boil it. After planting the Bluetooth speaker and bugging out, we're struck by a blast of dubstep, but unfortunately it wasn't powerful enough to kill all the Goombas, so we have to try again. Luckily, Kaz happened to pick up the other Bluetooth speaker that Carmine threw away at the beginning of the game, and it just so happens that this one is actually better than ours, and we can use it to carry out our plan correctly this time. We take an Uber to Bender's house, but our friends get shot down by bloopers, so we're forced to end the ride early and walk the rest of the way. Luckily, our walking skills have improved, so we get through this section with absolutely no problems whatsoever. One dead grub! Dom, Marcus uh, I killed out. myself with a grenade tag. <laughs> Support! Oh, I missed, apparently. Dom, Marcus is out! Uh, I oh, killed myself button? with it again. Okay. Marcus, we could use and then just run away afterwards. What? Oh boy, I came back too hard. Did you kill <laughs> I, yourself with a grenade tag? I... no? I think I killed yeah, myself with a regular drop grenade. You tagged him twice, the first one went off, and then Okay, it, I didn't I couldn't tell if I actually support. did it the first time. A medium-sized crab tries to get revenge for us killing his big brother, but we roast it with the power of dubstep. We're attacked by another Rule 63 Solomon Grundy, but our experience fighting the first one means that we dispatch this one easily with no problems whatsoever. The berserker. Dom, Marcus is out! No! <laughs> 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 Okay. What was your friend shooting? Yeah, that's I, exactly I what I tried to dodge. Did to <laughs> I didn't dodge. <laughs> Max, you're ruining. Oh, never mind. Nah, he got his own I'm thing. Apple. Oh, no! Oh, the, those poor pillar bits. <laughs> the thing oh, is no. too strong. <laughs> it's gonna kick me! Dumb. I can't Marcus do anything about that. We finally make it back to Bender's house, but it turns out they're squatters who claimed it while he was away, so we clear them out, wipe Bender's browser history from his dad's PC, and grab his dad's car before getting chased by Bowser who's mad that we've been stomping on all of his Goombas. All we have to do is follow the damn train, but the bridge is out and we get sidetracked trying to lower it. I come across another knob and I'm still hopped up on drugs, so it goes about as well as you think. <laughs> Why does this happen? <laughs> the Goombas put on a play with a medium-sized enemy crab as the lead, but we're not a fan of the fine arts, so we put a stop to it with no problems whatsoever. Uh oh. Oh, fuck. Uh, there's another knob, and of course, the drugs kick in. <laughs> Why does this happen? <laughs> <laughs> In order to get the bridge down, we have to connect the power cables together, so we hatch a plan to roast Bowser. Unfortunately, we overdid it, and now we can't eat any of it, so we just leave it. Forty minutes later, we finally have the bridge lowered so we can follow the damn train. We jump on the train and shoot the rest of the people on the train as we make our way to the front. The terrified passengers try desperately to stop our crazed murder spree, but we're wearing plot armor and can't be killed by... Wait a second, this isn't the right script. We're attacked by a third Rule 63 Solomon Grundy, but it didn't have a ticket to ride, so we kick it off. Oh, okay. I don't remember that Piece being the shit. solution, but I guess that works. After making our way to the final boss, we defeat Dedededed Wham with no problems whatsoever. Oh, yeah. Just wait. Oh, I'm down. He certainly died. Uh, what? Hold on. No, I just get killed by the birds. Dumb. I just insta died to those, oh, those ones. Dumb. This thing just insta kill me. Try the turret. Wow. We activate Dolby Digital surround sound and hitch a ride on our Uber before finally witnessing the true destructive power of dubstep, which kills all the Goombas and giant enemy crabs. Game over.